I come to you with bad news. Devin Haney just became a champion again in a brand new weight class, 140 pounds, defeating Regis Prograde. He gets at Javante Davis. He says he will never go to 135 pounds again. So the fight happening at that weight class, it's over. Not going to happen. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. For all your boxing needs, this is your one-stop shop. Subscribe to the channel. It's free. Now you guys see this tweet, brand new, fresh off the presses. Devin Haney says, and I quote, I will never go back to 135 pounds. Get it out of your head. So he's responding to Gervonta Davis. He follows up with an even more direct message. This one's a little bit spicy. You've been warned. Subscribe. It says Tank is a ussy. The P word. The power of the P. It said Tank is a ussy. He is scared to death of me. He always say he want to fight when I have a fight lined up. Well, now I'm free. So let's make it happen. Devin Haney. You guys see right there. So he's name calling Tank Davis, calling out Tank Davis. I will give you guys my thoughts, but let me tell you what Tank had to say. So Gervonta Davis earlier today, so this was before Devin Haney said, I'm not moving back to 35, et cetera, et cetera. Earlier today, Gervonta Davis tweeted this, and he says, get that snack ish out of boxing so right then and there he's basically it seems like he's insinuating that Devin Haney could be on something or that snap is not on the up and up in some kind of way because that's what it sounds like he's alluding to keep in mind I did a video about this earlier the California State Commission came out the information because they they released it that Devin Haney rehydrated 25 pounds versus Regis Prograde. So the smaller guy or who the people thought was the smaller guy, Devin Haney, went from 135 in the Lomachenko fight to his next fight, Regis Prograde, at 140, and then weighed in at 140 flat. The next day, he weighed in 165, and the commission report confirmed that. So he rehydrated 25 pounds overnight. And this was a brand new weight class for him. So I don't know. Devin Haney, it sounds like Gervonta Davis was taking a shot at that because he said, get that snack stuff out of boxing. Like, so he's basically insinuating he doesn't believe something's on the up and up. That's how I take it. If you guys take it a different way or have some secret hidden meaning, please let me know in the comment section. Javante Davis then said, did he or did he not get caught cheating before them snack people? And he's obviously referring to Balco and Victor Conti, who is the head of the snack program. So he's like, hey, answer a question. Did he or did he not get caught cheating before? And the answer is yes, he did. He had to testify. It was a whole federal case. Um, Marion Jones, the runner. And other people, they said they were supplied. I think Shane Mosley had some involvement in that. But for that, you guys just type in Balco, B-A-L-C-O, and Victor Conti, and you guys can do your own independent research. So it sounds like Tank is not sold that everything's on the up and up. Mm. And that's a heavy accusation. Finally, Gervonta Davis took to his social media. He says, and Eddie Hearn was about to let someone fight before, after they caught dude cheating. And that also is true. So Gervonta Davis is stating facts. The fight he's referring to is Dillian White, who is now, not at the time, but now he's failed a total of three drug tests in his career, boxing and mixed martial arts. 
He just failed, and I ain't really heard nothing from Dillian White ever since, but he did fail a third test. But the one that Gervonta is referencing in this tweet, saying Eddie was about to let someone fight, and they caught dude. He's referring to Eddie Hearn had a matchroom car, rematch room, and Dillian White did end up fighting Oscar Rivas, and he failed. They, they announced privately, not publicly, they did announce that he had failed a test, didn't tell the other team. So Oscar Rivas and his team had no knowledge of this. And then they had some kind of private hearing and let Dillian White fight and sort it out after. So this is what Gervonta is referring to. A lot going on here. A lot going on here. This was Devin Haney versus Regis Progre. That was a spectacular performance by Haney. This is the shape he was in. You see he dropped the 140 career 140 pounder Regis Progre. And it was a one-sided fight. I really didn't give Regis Progre any rounds. I gave him no rounds. Devin Haney, that was some people are saying his best performance. Guys like Tim Bradley who doubted him and said that Regis Progre was going to win. Or at least he said that Devin Haney is in trouble. He came back and had to give Devin Haney his props. Now, Bill Haney post-fight, and you guys stay tuned to the end of this video so you can watch that video. Bill Haney, he I was right there in San Francisco at the Chase Center, and Bill Haney went off. So I got a video on that. Check that on the channel, Bill Haney Unplugged, where Bill Haney called out Tank, and he's like, man, he need to fight... He need to fight us and, you know, these kind of things. Now Devin Haney continues to press that line and push for that fight. He's saying every time I don't have a fight, Tank Davis pops up when I have a fight. But then when I don't have a fight, he said he's he's saying everything but let's fight. Now, my thoughts. The great Ego Stradamus strikes again. This was highly, highly predictable for me. I told you this was going to be a stumbling block in no time. What is that? The weight. Devin Haney pretty much outgrew 135 pounds. The great ego Stradamus strikes again. I told you this. And I, the one thing I will say, in all fairness, that was unclear from Devin Haney is there was a bit of double talk in terms of Devin said he would go back to 135 for the right fight. In recent memory, he said that. But then now took to social media and said he's never going back. He doesn't ever plan on going back to 135. So that's different things. Devin Haney initially did say that for the right fight, he would consider going back or would go back. Now, after how he felt, I guess, with Regis Progray, seeing his body, seeing the performance he was able to put on, you know, in front of a hometown crowd, he's not feeling it. And now he's like, nah, I'm never going back to 35. Listen, I'm telling you, I said the same thing before. Devin's a hell of a fighter. He's etching out his own path. Tank is the, is the A side over everybody in the lighter weight classes. So he can keep calling out for Tank. Everybody's calling out Tank. Everybody's mentioning Tank. I told you, wait, wait, wait. Weight was going to be a huge stumbling block. And fast forward to the future, I've now been proven right. Because with Devin Haney rehydrating to basically a super middleweight on the night of the fight with Regis Progre and going in a different direction, he's up at 140. Tank did fight at 140 once against Mario Barrios, but he didn't stay up there. He went back down, and he's been there ever since, right? So it's not like he has a bunch of fights at 140. Devin Haney rehydrated to 165, which is, again, super middleweight territory. Tank being the A-side, I don't see him giving leverage to any opponent. It's not just Devin. He didn't do it to Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia did the same thing. I'm a growing kid. I'm a growing boy. Fight me at 140. And they end up fighting at a catchweight of 136. So with Devin Haney now proclaiming that he's never going back I really don't know if the tank fight happens, right? And I know 
the fans, a lot of fans hate PBC, they hate Tank, hate Al Heyman, and things like that. So they're going to still push for it and say, oh, he needs to do it. But again, when you're the top of the totem pole, you don't really have to bend to other people's will. You beat to the sound of your own drum. Floyd did it. Canelo does it. And that's just the reality of it. So people can say whatever they want. I told you, I told you, and then I showed you weight was going to be a factor. So realistically speaking, I could see. And here's the other thing. Devin is talking about fighting at 47, which is even higher. Tanks never fought there. I mean, neither has Devin at the moment. So I think between both fighters, egos and pride and, and money, I mean, because money is also an issue. Tank's going to be like, I'm the lion's share. I'm the A side. Devin's going to be like, oh, I was undisputed. And I moved up and beat Regis Progre at 140 easy. So there's there's a lot that would really need to be hashed out for this fight to happen. And me personally, I don't really see it. Devin's, you know, trying to clown Tank. And, you know, he's putting out his tweets, calling Tank names. Tank is doing little subliminals saying, hey, when I when I pull up on dude on my soul, it's not going to be what you want. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm wrong. To this point, <laughs> your boy Ego has been right. But we'll see if I'm wrong. The The weight is, I think, the major obstacle that we're at. So let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel for more boxing content. I will keep you guys updated and posted. Devin with the harsh words to Javante Davis. Javante basically insinuating that the Devin snack combination is a miss. Something's off with that. Let me know what you think in the comment section. You dig. Subscribe. Best in the business. And it's not even close.